The wall. The latest weapons of war against immigrants around the world. We monitor the growth of the phenomenon from the Trump wall to the walls of Turkey, Pakistan, and Poland, passing through the Israeli separation wall, and the Belfast gates. Walls. Fences. Screens. Barbed wire. Baffles. Gates. Different expressions, but they have the same meaning, separation between two things. Historically, it was intended to counter foreign invasions. In the modern era diversified goals. Sometimes its goal was to separate the antagonists from each other. Other times, the goal was to imprison citizens within their own country. Today, it has become a fashion spread around the world, after many countries have turned it into the latest weapons to confront what some describe as an external invasion that is not carried out by foreign armies, as in the past, but through hordes of immigrants. This report highlights some of the many walls of separation around the world, showcasing their successes and failures. The scene in Belfast was truly shocking, especially for a Lebanese who lived through the years of the civil war on the lines of contact that separated the two parts of Beirut. Just as the Lebanese division had a sectarian character to a large extent, between the eastern part of Beirut, which is predominantly Christian, and the western part of Beirut, which is predominantly Muslim, so was the scene in the capital of Northern Ireland in the 90s of the last century. Here, too, the division was sectarian, but it was between the Christians themselves, the Protestants who wanted Northern Ireland to remain part of the United Kingdom and thus part of the British Crown, and the Catholics who wanted to unite the northern part of the island with its southern part, the Republic of Ireland. The division in the two parts of Beirut was expressed by contact lines that were established during the war years. They were mostly fortified streets on either side and on the roads branching off from them, with high earth or concrete berms, or the remains of buses erected on top of each other to separate two neighboring areas, but they are sectarianly different, such as the Christian and al Ramana and the Muslim Shia. In fact, these lines of demarcation established the separation between the population, who could not reach their opposing areas except through a few crossing points that break through the lines of separation, such as the famous museum crossing between the two Beirutis. The contact lines in Belfast were somewhat different. Here, the separation wall was truly a wall, stretching over many kilometers, up to more than five meters high, with gates closing at night so that Catholics would not infiltrate their Protestant neighborhoods, or vice versa, and then reopened at sunrise the next morning. This has been the situation since August 1969, when a security wall was erected in Belfast separating the Catholic Nationalists of Falls Road from their Unionist Protestant neighbors on Shankill Road, just as it is between the Lebanese neighbors. 
for example, in Shia and an al ramana the 1998 Good Friday Agreement with the aim of bringing peace to Northern Ireland was able to greatly calm relations between neighbours' adversaries, especially after the disarmament of the Catholic Irish Republican Army and the formation of a local government that included both sides of the conflict. However, the separation walls between the Catholic and Protestant regions still exist today. Opinion polls indicate that a majority of the population sees the necessity of its survival in order to avoid frictions between the opposing parties. The year 2019 witnessed a sign of appeasement among the religiously different neighbours in Belfast, as a new chapter gate was erected on Townsend Street, a sub-street linking Falls Road, Catholics, and Shankill Road, Protestants. The new gate was transparent allowing to see what was behind it, and it was built near the steel hard gate separating the two suburbs. It opens at 7 in the morning and then closes at nightfall, and remains closed during the weekend. In fact, the Townsend Street crossing is one example of separation walls between the Irish feuding, which they call peace lines because they prevent war. It is estimated that there are currently approximately 116 separation barriers between Catholics and Protestants in Northern Ireland, mostly concentrated in Belfast, but also in Derry and Co Armagh. The separation gates between the Irish return to memory with the return of the contact lines, albeit for a short time recently, between An al Remina and Shia in Beirut, and with the spread of the phenomenon of building fences, walls, and barriers with the aim of separating between one region and another. While the Irish gates and Lebanese fortified berms were intended to separate the belligerents from each other and prevent the entry of one party into the territory of another, the fashion of modern separation walls is largely aimed these days at preventing the crossing of strangers from one region to another. Strangers in Europe and America are of course, immigrants. Former President Donald Trump built a huge wall to push them back along the US-Mexico border. The Poles, in turn, are building a wall on their border with Belarus to deter migrants trying to knock on the gates of the European Union from its eastern border. For the same purpose, Turkey is currently building a huge wall on its border with Iran. Israel, in turn, builds walls and fences with the aim of separating the Palestinians from its areas of control, whether in the heart of the West Bank or around the Gaza Strip. Spain, too, built walls around its two enclaves in northern Morocco, Ceuta, and Melilla, in an attempt to stem the waves of immigrants streaming to reach Europe. Even Pakistan, which is accused of sympathizing with the Afghan Taliban movement, in turn is building a wall on the Durand line that separates it from Afghanistan in the heart of the Pashtun areas on both sides of the border. Are these fences, walls, and barriers useful in achieving their purpose?
The Trump wall has apparently succeeded in reducing the level of immigration across the border with Mexico. The apartheid separation wall, in turn, contributed, as the Israelis say, to reducing the operations that the Palestinians were carrying out inside Israel before the wall was built. Suda and Melilla have succeeded in reducing immigration attempts, of course in cooperation with the Moroccan authorities. The walls of Poland, Turkey, and Pakistan have not yet been completed, and therefore it is probably too early to judge them. Building a wall on the Mexican border was a central focus of Donald Trump's 2016 campaign, making good on his promise after taking office in 2017, pushing for a wall across the borders of California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas, vowing to make Mexico pay. The price of its construction costs, which this country rejected. In fact, there were about 1,000 kilometers of the U.S. border with Mexico with various types of barriers before Trump came to power. But during his tenure, a 727-kilometer-long wall was built to largely replace the existing border barriers, which Trump described as old and worthless. In the final year of Trump's rule, the wall succeeded in reducing the flow of refugees across the border with Mexico. However, Current U.S. President Joe Biden promised that he would not build an additional one step in the wall, opposing the use of funds allocated by the former president from the budget of the Ministry of Defense to finance its construction. Today, it is not clear what will happen to the wall whose construction cost estimates range between $15 billion and $40 billion. Turkey's Wall with Iran Turkey is currently strengthening its border with Iran with a huge wall that includes concrete pieces 3 meters high, with the aim of countering the influx of refugees, especially Afghans, in the recent period following the fall of the regime in Kabul to the Taliban movement. Turkey has so far completed the construction of 155 kilometers of the separation wall, which is supposed to extend at a length of 241 kilometers across its eastern border with Iran. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan says that his country will not be a repository of refugees on behalf of Europe, knowing that his country harbors huge numbers of Syrian refugees, and he receives billions of dollars from the European Union in return for accommodating them and preventing their flow to Europe, as happened years ago. Pakistan's Wall with Afghanistan Today, Pakistan says it has completed 90 per center construction of a berm on its border with Afghanistan. The Associated Press quoted Colonel Rizwan Nazir, a Pakistani military official who was speaking to foreign reporters in Turksum, Khyber border region, last August that the Pakistani army has already completed 90% of the planned fence on the border with Afghanistan, pledging completion of construction of the remaining 10% by the end of the year.
Pakistan's goal in building the fence is to prevent cross-border militant attacks. And the process of building the border fence, in fact, began in 2017, along the border with Afghanistan, which extends 2,611 kilometers, the border known as the Durand Line. The border fence between the two countries consists of two sets of interconnected chains of fences separated by a distance of two meters, filled with coils of barbed wire. The height of each fence is about four meters. In addition, the Pakistani army is setting up surveillance cameras to monitor any attempt to breach the border. Afghanistan does not recognize the border with Pakistan as it separates the Pashtun regions from each other. It is not yet clear how the Taliban movement, after it came to power in Kabul, will deal with this border with Pakistan. A Polish wall on the Belarusian border. In turn, Poland is building a controversial wall on its eastern border with Belarus, in response to the influx of an unprecedented wave of migrants, mostly from the Middle East and Afghanistan. The cost of the fence is estimated at 353 million euros, and it is planned to extend over a distance of more than 100 kilometers on the eastern border of the European Union. Since last August, thousands of migrants have been flocking across the Belarusian border towards Poland, a member of the European Union. The EU accuses the government of President Alexander Lukashenko in Minsk of arranging the flow of migrants in response to European sanctions imposed against his regime in the wake of the controversial elections in which he won a new term, and also in response to his regime's suppression of the opposition. Poland sent its army to the border with Belarus in an attempt to stem the waves of migrants, and began erecting a barbed wire fence. But European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen rejected a request by Poland and 11 other EU countries to fund the construction of border barriers with the aim of stopping the entry of refugees. There will be no funding for barbed wire and walls, she said. Israel and the West Bank Wall During the government of Ehud Barak in 2000, Israel approved the construction of the wall in the West Bank, after years that witnessed a huge wave of bombings by Palestinians against Israeli targets. The length of the wall is 810 kilometers, and work began on it near Jinan in 2002. According to critics, it does not go around the West Bank, but rather passes through it, dividing it into separate areas. The route of the wall will allow the Israelis to effectively annex about 46% of the West Bank, and will cause the rest of the West Bank to be divided into ghettos, Bantu stands and military zones, according to the website of the Stop the Wall organization against its construction. This organization explains that 20% of the length of the wall is built with concrete blocks, specifically in Bethlehem and some parts of Ramallah, Kalkalya, parts of Tulkarm, and across the city envelope of Jerusalem.
The wall is 8 meters high, twice the height of the Berlin Wall, with watchtowers and buffer zones ranging from 30 to 100 meters wide to erect electrified fences, trenches, cameras, sensitive sensors, in addition to military patrols. In other areas, the wall consists of layers of fences and barbed wire, roads designated for military patrols, sand paths to monitor footprints, channels, and trenches, and surveillance cameras. In 2019, Israel designated 74 gates and 5 checkpoints through openings in the barrier for the passage of farmers. The organization Stop the Wall says that only 11 of these crossings and gates were opened daily, while 10 were open for some time during weekdays and during the olive harvest season, but the vast majority of them, 53, only opened during the olive harvest season. The Wall Around Gaza Approximately 2 million people live in the Gaza Strip, in an area of 365 square kilometers, this makes the region one of the most densely populated regions in the world. Around the Strip, Israel is building a wall surrounded by a buffer zone, Pafer Zone, that extends between 300 and 600 meters. In 2019, the Israeli Ministry of Defense began the final phase of construction of a 20-foot high steel fence that will surround the Gaza Strip. The fence will extend 65 kilometers around the Strip, part concrete and part steel, and it will extend both underground and above. The Walls of Suda and Melilla In the 1990s, Spain built walls around the two enclaves under its control in northern Morocco, Suda and Melilla. Its aim was to stop illegal smuggling and prevent the entry of migrants hoping to reach Europe. The two enclaves are, after all, the only border of the European Union on the southern shore of the Mediterranean. The fence consists of two parallel walls topped with barbed wire, separated by a distance that allows the passage of ambulances and police patrols. Delegation The construction of this fence began in Suda in 1993, and it was initially 2.5 meters high and 8.4 kilometers long. In 1995, the height of the fence was increased to 3 meters, and later to a height of 6 meters. The Spaniards also built a similar wall about 3 meters high around Melilla, with a length of 11 kilometers. Despite the registration of annual attempts by hundreds of Africans to storm the fences and reach the European paradise, it seems that the Spanish wall succeeded, it seems, in cooperation with the Moroccan authorities, to stop the flow of migrants. Great Wall of China The main section of the China Wall dates back to the Ming Dynasty, between 1358 and 1644, and China says it stretches for 13,000 miles, 21,000 kilometers, though other estimates say it is 1,500 to 5,000 miles long. 
the Chinese do not actually call the wall the grave. They just call it the city wall and add the adjective tall to the name. According to the BBC's History magazine website, the construction of the wall, made of bricks containing sticky ground rice, was intended to prevent foreign invasion, but Genghis Khan showed how to exploit a flaw in a great wall such as China's. In 1449 he led the Mongol legions through one side and entered China. The Ming dynasty later succeeded in driving the Mongols out of its lands. Hadrian's Wall in Northern England The famous Hadrian's Wall, between Northern England and Scotland, formed the northwestern frontier of the Roman Empire for 300 years. It was built by the Roman army on the orders of Emperor Hadrian after his visit to Britain in 122 AD, noting that the Roman conquest of Britain began in the year 43 BC. The wall stretches for 73 miles, 80 miles by Roman standards, from east to west England, from Wales and on the River Tyne to Bonus on Solway. The wall is one of the most famous walls of the Romans and was built in six years. The plan was to build a wall of rocks or layers of grass, with a guarded crossing gate every mile, and two watchtowers every two miles. To further fortify the wall, the Romans built 14 fortresses along its course and dug a deep and wide trench around it. In fact, the purpose of building this Roman wall is not different from the walls that are being erected in the world today. If the current walls were being built to separate the inhabitants of the country from the hordes of immigrants, Hadrian's goal in building the wall was to separate the barbarians from the Romans. The barbarians of that time were, it seems, the tribes of Scotland which the Romans failed to subjugate. Berlin Wall The main objective of building the wall in Berlin was to stop immigration, but not in its current sense. The walls being erected in the world today are primarily intended to prevent outsiders from entering a country that does not want them. The Berlin Wall had the opposite goal. The state of East Germany prevented its citizens from immigrating from it and fleeing abroad. Since the end of World War II in 1945, Berlin has been divided into four sections. The eastern section is under the control of the Soviets and the Communist government of East Germany. And a western section shared by the United States, Britain, and France. Since Berlin itself was entirely located in the Soviet-controlled part of East Germany, the city is more than 100 miles from the border with West Germany, the Soviet leadership viewed the capitalist Western presence in the heart of its sphere of influence as a thorn in the throat. In the words of then-Soviet Prime Minister Nikita Khrushchev, the Russians laid siege to the western section of Berlin, 1958, to push the Americans and their allies to leave. But they did not succumb and responded by setting up an airlift to transport supplies to besieged West Berlin. Even worse for the Soviets, 
They watched annually thousands of Germans check through East Berlin to West Berlin. In June 1961, 19,000 East Germans left for West Germany via Berlin. The following month, the number reached 30,000. In the first 11 days of August, 16,000 fled. Thus, the praises of immigrants fleeing from the bliss of communist rule in East Germany repeated the praises of living in the hell of the capitalist rule in its western neighbor. The Soviet response was swift. They gave the East German government permission to close the borders. In just two weeks, the East German army, police, and volunteers had erected a barbed wire wall between the two halves of Berlin, this cut off communication between residents who previously moved freely in the four sections of Berlin, and this is no longer available except through strict security measures through three gates, Alpha Checkpoint, Bravo Checkpoint and Charlie Checkpoint. East Germany subsequently set up 12 transit points through the wall, which has largely succeeded in closing the door to immigrants from within the country to outside it. Of those who attempted to sneak under or over the wall,